On today's lesson, I'm gonna give you some technical and tactical cues to return better in doubles with the help of ATP number 20 and 2024 US Open semifinalist Nate Lamons. So let's get started. Nate recently came on my podcast and we spoke about a lot of his thought process and how he plays his best doubles. But I wanna share a couple of the most important things that I took away from his episode. And the first thing was the grip that he uses to return serve. So take a look at this clip and then I'll walk you through what he actually does. Yeah, so I, like you said, I do, I hold the forehand grip with my right hand and I hold my backhand grip with my left. And so the reason I do that is if it comes to the forehand, the left hand can just come off. And for the backhand, the right hand is pretty loose on the grip anyway. And, you know, in theory, it should be dominated by the left hand anyway. So it's it's a fairly easy adjustment to make. Um, the exception to that is when I'm lobbing. Usually it's sort of a hybrid, so it's not super obvious. Um, but it's not quite it's not quite a backhand or a forehand somewhere in the middle. But I do hold it similar, um, and I think for me personally, it's it's related to sort of the faster serving that you mentioned before. It's I feel like especially on a first, there's no time to really like rotate the racket. But some guys do, so some guys are good at that. Especially guys with one handers, they're forced to rotate. Um, but for me, I find especially with the fast fast, I also return pretty close to the baseline. So I think if I if I were to scoop back, maybe there's more time that would allow for, for some shifting. But I think it's probably close to how I've always returned. But I do remember somewhat recently being super aware of that and, and making that a conscious effort. Um, and I've definitely liked how it feels and the result. Um, but yeah, I think there are moments if I know, hey, I'm going to be hunting for a forehand here where I've basically sold out and I, you know, especially on clay. And if I know I'm going to take a step back and really hunt for a forehand. Um, that it'll just be, it's all forehand. And if it goes to the backhand somehow, then then kind of too good. So I took this video of Nate at this year's US Open. And you can see when I zoom in that his right hand is on his forehand grip. His left hand is on his backhand grip. So when the ball comes quickly, all he has to do is just slide his right hand a little bit. Instead of maybe holding the racket up here where you have two hands that have to change, he only has to change one. And I'm always amazed at how people just use their left hand randomly. Sometimes it's holding the racket, but not with the grip. Sometimes it's up here and he's just super efficient with that. So if you're playing someone who's got a fast serve, you're definitely gonna wanna get used to this grip so you can make it more efficient and easy to change. The next thing Nate spoke about for returning serves was how he picks a target and then some of the physical and mental cues that he has to hit better returns. So let's take a look at that clip. Me personally, I like to, I like to decide where I'm gonna hit the return before the serve comes and I think part of that is, um, like you said, the serving is very high quality. A lot of times it's very fast. And I find that having to, to try to interpret where my opponents are going to be and hit away from them takes away from me being able to hit the best shot possible. And so I usually like to pick my spot and hit it to the best of my ability. And if the guy is there and they're covering it and it's an easy point, fine. I think I live with that as opposed to you know, trying to see where the net guy is, I'm going to hit around them uh, and then missing it, you know, or the guy still being there. So, um, you know, and, and some guys do play that way. There's, there's a lot of the highest level doubles guys that do play that way. And to be honest, I don't know how they do it. So I can't maybe speak to their uh, technique or approach to that. Um, as far as the sort of cues that I use for myself when I'm returning, um, they sort of, they do sort of evolve and change a lot. Um, a lot of it is surface based. Uh, at the moment we're on a hard court. So the bounces are pretty true. They tend to be a little hot, you know, higher, but not, they don't necessarily slow down as much as they would on clay. So I can sort of trust the ball to still come into me. And usually the, the mindset and the things I cue myself are, are kind of let the ball get to me. That's the biggest. And I find when I get a little charged up or I'm trying to hit too hard, I'm making contact too far out in front lose a little bit of the grip on the ball and the control. Um, so the biggest thing I remind myself is to kind of let it settle in. And I think the amount of years I've had on court, I trust that my sort of stroke on the ball, assuming it gets into the sweet spot or kind of into that contact zone I like directly next to me, that the the, the swing is going to be true and it's going to sort of have natural spin and it'll come down. Um, you know, for visual cues, I like to – imagine especially for me as a do side guy for the inside out backhand um it tends to be a lower return um part of that is it's a backhand it doesn't have as much spin 
um, but also it's um, sort of an effectiveness thing. I mean, I like to to eye sort of a foot over the net, you know, foot to foot and a half. Um, and that uh, obviously takes the net out of play and it keeps it from being, you know, sort of an easy, easy volley, assuming the guy's there. Um, on the forehand side, the forehand's a little different. Uh, for second serves, I like to get around if I can, uh, hurt the guys with it, instill a little fear if I can. Um, cause in, in, in a perfect world, you know, they're going to serve me sort of into my body. I have shorter arms, so guys can stretch me pretty well. So I like to sort of dare them to go to the forehand and if they can do it for the whole match, you know, sort of too good, too good for them. And I mean, that can adjust, obviously it depends if you play a righty versus a lefty, which spots they can spread the best. But, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I like to also mix in the lob and the reason I like to do that is it creates a little space to hit to to hit a normal return and especially nowadays the doubles game guys play super close to the net and they're very good at knockoff volleys so if i'm just hitting out all the time it forces me to hit into small targets i'd much rather use the lob force guys to move in ways they're maybe not planning to or would prefer to um and a lot of times that gets us in a broken down point where jackson and i we rely on our athleticism a lot and broken down points to win games on the return side. Um, some guys are more of sort of a true returning team and they're going to kind of blast away and trust that they're going to get hot in the right games. Um, and I think for us, we've, we've settled into, yes, we'll do some of that for sure, you know, and rely on some moves as the returners partner, trust that we're going to get some good returns, but we also use the lob and use sort of scrappy points to, uh, you know, trust our, trust our abilities, which is a little bit of the athletic side at the moment. All right, so there are a ton of gems in that clip that you can take away. The first and foremost is he picks his target before the point starts. So instead of getting distracted by the net player's positioning, if they're faking, if they're poaching, he's done his homework before. He's decided he's either going to go cross-quarter line, and he just picks that target. That keeps things very simple for you and keeps you focused on actually making the return instead of having your mind distracted on both making the return and what that net player is doing. So I would highly recommend, instead of having the ball coming at you and then deciding where you're gonna go, pick before the point starts. The second thing he talked about was how he actually gets out of rhythm when he tries to hit too fast. He starts reaching for the ball. And in general, overhitting is just a really poor option for your game. It really messes up a lot of players. So again, he lets the ball come to him, but I think just realizing that your medium speed average return is good enough is very, very important. He also talks about attacking second serve returns and trying to put pressure on his opponent on that second serve. You want them to feel like they are on defense when they're serving, and really that best opportunity for that to happen is on that second serve. And the final thing he talked about was mixing in that lob return. Some people get very, very close, and if you don't know if they're poaching or staying and you are having a hard time getting around them, go ahead and throw up a lob. And if it's three quarter court depth, that's still gonna be very, very effective. So those are four really easy things you can take away from Nate in that clip. Hopefully one or many of these tips resonated with you, but returning well in doubles is absolutely crucial. You wanna have an effective serve and an effective return so you can be on offense and controlling how the match goes. So take one or all of these tips, but usually when I hear something from one of the best players in the world, I put that into my arsenal and start using it immediately.